Give it to Riot, they need more security guard for Faker. Let's see. Damn. That is a lot of fans who are just here to see them and like fucking arrive at the airport in China. This guy wants a signature so bad. Oh my god. Oh my god. The fandom is crazy. I know someone who waited eight hours at the airport who wanted to see their favorite K-pop artist actually insane. I have a story about this actually. I'll, I'll tell it right after this video. How many I mean a lot of this has to be the crowd moving, but like a lot of it isn't just like the same people, right? Like it's it's like new people. The, look at the fucking crowd, bro. This could like fill a studio. Oh my god. That made me cringe a bit. That made me cringe a bit. I feel like one of the last things that a human being and you got to remember guys, it's it's human beings even though, you know, to you they are like gods of this game or your hobby or whatever you're passionate about. A human being after a long day of travel, one of the last things they want to do is get a uh, 100 cameras pointed in their face, yelled at and asked to say hi to the camera. Like, that's just common sense. Um, but... Yeah, my story about this is in 2017, we went to Wuhan for Worlds. And um, this is the roster with me, Bjergsen, uh, Biofrost, Hanser, and Sven. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking back to it. It is. And um, we went to the airport and there was these like, I think two, maybe three Chinese fangirls that were just waiting at the airport. And, you know, we're obviously trying to be nice and just say, oh, thanks. And they brought us some gifts. They brought us some like um, Chinese beef jerky and like snacks and stuff. And, I, I, you know, I asked them like, what? How did you know? When, when we were going to be here because we took it pretty seriously we didn't actually tweet out when we were going to um like when we were going to arrive in wuhan right we're not like giving everyone our fucking flight information and i think one of them said something along the lines of we just came here like every day for a few days and i was like what the fuck I was just like, what the fuck is, like, that? That's just, like, insane to me. Like, you would just wait at the airport, and I guess they would time it with any sort of flights that would be coming out of L.A. Yeah. And, and it was all for this, guys. It was all for two minutes, basically, of us taking pictures, taking autographs with them, accepting their gifts, and then we're on our merry way, like, we're taking the bus to our hotel. And I was, I was just amazed. I couldn't, I can't tell, I can't remember exactly if it was just like one day or if it was a few days, but like, I just thought that was crazy that they would just kind of like randomly be at the airport for that. I probably made their life. Yeah. I mean, I think about that too. It's like, I don't really have anyone that I would like fanboy over. I think probably the one person in the world where I would feel a little bit starstruck if I was next to is Arnold Schwarzenegger. 
I can't really think of anyone else who has been like a really big inspiration to me who's like a celebrity and not just like a peer of mine. Um, but anyways, like I, I always think about that, like for them, it, ma it made their week that we were nice to them. It made their week that we took the time to not just give them an autograph, but, you know, say like, happy new year or happy birthday, or I wish you the best. You know, it's like, just like the, the little tiny extra 10% extra credit that you do is like really important to them. I simmed over Uzi super bad, but I've met Uzi multiple times. I don't feel starstruck around him at all. I would never camp for Arnold Schwarzenegger. I, I don't really have that sort of like fan, um, like, you know, I don't really put anyone on a pedestal like that. But I do think that Arnold Schwarzenegger is a really big inspiration to... He's just a really big inspiration. <laughs> he's, just, he's just a really, really big inspiration. I mean, like, he... was a bodybuilder when bodybuilding wasn't popular he became the goat of bodybuilding he popularized bodybuilding to what it is today when it was basically not really something anyone really cared about or was on people's radar much at the time but then he elevated it to a completely new level and was the greatest and then he had this really thick accent this really really thick and hard to understand austrian accent i think and People said, you're never going to be an actor. Like, you don't even really fucking speak English. And then he became an iconic actor that everyone recognizes. And he became famous for his accent that people thought kind of sounded stupid. And then they said, well, you're never going to be a politician. Because all you do, you're just a big muscle head. You're a meathead and an actor. What do you know about politics? And then he became the governor. So I think, like, that kind of story is kind of crazy. Because, like, against all odds, he was just able to, like, achieve his dreams. Like, set a goal and achieve it. And achieve it and achieve it and it's like it's not just like a little goal it's like he wasn't just like a fucking unknown like he a, actor or like an unknown bodybuilder and like an unknown politician like he actually you know in all three of them he kind of hit a home run i think that's cool so that's why for me he's like a uh, inspiration